This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So in your exam question, um, make sure that you are methodical and you show everything on the page or every working, every rule, because there is um, marks for stating the obvious and even for copying parts of the question into the answer. So the approach, I've just put a little bit of a section in here um, about how to deal with this. Um, so work out the lifetime tax, stage one. Um, it says, if any CLTs have been made, the computation for lifetime transfers must be prepared to compute any taxable, any tax payable, ascertain who paid the tax to work out whether it's 20 or 25%. Then you've got stage two, which is the additional tax on lifetime, and then stage three. The more practice you get at this, uh, the more you be able to do slight shortcuts. I don't advise big shortcuts because it is the workings that are necessary. And I know the answers are very long winded, but there are marks for getting everything down on, on paper. Now, example number four is a, is a um, has all three stages in it. And as I've said before, you're unlikely to get a big question for 15 marks. Uh, on all three stages. You're more likely to get stage one, stage two, and an easy three, or an easy one, two, and a complicated, or a bit, no, not complicated, um, complex um, stage three. So we're going to do all three stages of this, um, and I'm just going to read through it, and then I'm going to write some of the answers down, some of the answers we will read. So this is the date that Joe has died. And he's giving 250000 to his wife. At his time. So that's going to be exempt. You notice as I go through the question, I'm going to be making notes. The remainder of the estate is going to his son. So this is his estate. We've got a main residence, 300000 Repayment mortgage, that can be reduced. Holiday home building societies, an ISA, some shares. Okay, Ooh, now that is going to need a calculation. You might get one or two of those, not just copying. Um, a life assurance policy, open market value of 125. That's what he received. That's what goes in the estate. You've got some credit card bills, so that's got to come off. Um, now, he'd verbally promised to pay those. That you can't have. Funeral expenses, yeah. If it's a verbal agreement, it's not legally um, establishable and therefore uh, won't be allowed. Now, so that's the estate. So that actually, so they're actually giving you stage three information before they give you the information of what's been happening in his lifetime. So lifetime transfers. Let's go through these. Cash to his son, therefore it's a pet, on the occasion of his wedding, so we've got a marriage exemption there, plus annual exemptions, times two, because that was his first transfer in 2016. Then in 2017, he transferred 405 into a trust, that's a CLT, and he paid the tax, 25%. Ooh, December 21, he gave 4,000 shares to his son. Prior to the gift, he'd owned 16,000 of those shares. Share valuations, what are we going to have to do here? Diminution. Before and after. No rate band. We're going to keep it always the same. Work out the amount of tax that is due. Okay. Now, what I would like you to do now, we've done the whole chapter 
um, you've done, you've seen me do lifetime tax four times, five times, can't remember how many times, seems like a lot of times, stop the lecture now and do the lifetime tax, okay? Because I'm going to show the answer. But I'd like you to pause and write it out and have a go yourself before are you ready? You pause. I'm going to show the answer. Look away now if you don't want to know. So these, remember again, these are the lifetime transfers. This is stage one. We've got the date and we've got the type of gift. That's going to get marked. And we've got the transfers of values as a working here. This is the diminution. What did he have before? He had 16,000 shares at £25 each, because that's what it says in the question. And afterwards, he had 12,000 shares at £18 each. So that's the transfer of value calculation that we've done. These two figures here have been copied from the question. Exemptions. A marriage exemption an annual exemption for the current year and the previous year, reducing the pet down to 29,000. No lifetime tax because it's a pet. Then we've got 1718. Now, there's no 1617 because it's been used. So this now we're going to have to work out the tax due. And then the pet at the end has two annual exemptions and again, no lifetime. Okay, so let's have a look at the tax due on that. Where's the question? 402,000. That's the 402,000 there. Nil rate band means that the first £325,000 of that, I've written it out like this before, because none of it was used, leaving a balance of 77000 which would be taxed at 25%. That's the tax. Add the two together. That's the gross transfer figure that we need to carry forward. Now, stage two. Joe died on the 1st of April, 23. So let's go back seven years to the 1st of April, 16. Draw a line in the sand. Where did these three gifts occur? Did they occur in this box or are they exempt and outside that? Let's put them all in. They, are, they occurred in November 16, July 17, and December 21. I think all of these, there was a pet in November 16. Oh, just, that's now taxable. Then we had a CLT in July 17 that has additional tax and then we had a pet in December 21 which is now taxable there are three additional computations that we now need to do we are going to do them in date order Okay, we're going to do them in date order. Let's have a look at those. Okay, so the first one was the pet in November 16. The gross transfer was 29,000. As this was the first gift, the nil rate band of 325,000. we can use that number there. So that pet, there is no further tax 
Oops. No further tax due. Let's look at the second one. This was a CLT and it was in July 2017. The gross transfer was 421,250. The nil rate band is 325,000 pounds less what has been used. So if we go back here seven years, we go back to July 2010, and this pet here occurs in that seven year period, and therefore we have to remove 29,000 of it that was used, leaving 296,000 to reduce that CLT down to 125,250. Okay, so we've done that. Now, we've got to work out the tax on that. So, the IHT due, 125,250 is due at 40%. That is the death rate, 50,000. One hundred pounds less taper relief, sixty percent because between five and six years, thirty thousand and sixty pounds, reducing the tax bill down to that. Now, if you remember from the answer here, there was a tax paid. See it there. We can now reduce that from here, less. Now do them in that order. That must come first and then this must come afterwards. Tax paid in lifetime of 19,250. So now £790 is due to be paid. The third transfer was the pet in December 21. If you remember, we had to do, no, it won't be in there, it will be in there then. There we go. And we're doing them in chronological order. We've done that one, we've done this one. Now this pet has now become chargeable. So that pet had a value of £178,000. Nil rate band, £325,000 less used. Okay, seven years again to December 14 which means that we have used 296 and 29. 296 and 29, which means there is no nil rate band left. All of that is taxable at 40%. There was no lifetime tax. There was no taper relief because of the dates. So £71,200 will have to be paid by the trustees to cover that liability. Okay, now, if we go to the estate, you will see that we've brought all the various elements in the residence and the mortgage because it was a repayment mortgage. This is stage three. The banks, the building societies, the ISAs, the shares have been calculated. The life assurance was what was received, not the market value. We've taken off the debt, not the verbal debt. 
and the funeral expenses. We've taken out the bequest or the gift to the wife, which is exempt, giving a chargeable estate of 758,000. The transfers within seven years of death means that the nil rate band is fully used. Only the resident nil rate band is available, which means that £583,000 needs to be taxed at 40%, giving us two, three, three, two hundred. Now, I've said before, you're unlikely to get a question that has a large amount here of stage one and two. And then an estate which requires work at stage three. But the question is good an example for you to see how it all interacts together. So the final uh, section on this, this is about IHT planning. Um, occasionally, very occasionally, you will get a question about this. Um, just a few points. And again, you can read through this. I don't need to read through this for you. Um, sensible to think carefully about succession planning to minimise what may be a large tax bill upon death. Um, lifetime transfers are important, but with pets, very, very important that you've got to make sure that the person who is giving these gifts away is going to survive seven years. If not, at least three, so they get taper relief. Because if not, then the person receiving the gift is going to have a massive tax bill if the gift is a large one. There is, however, advantages. No immediate IHT is payable and the value of the gift is frozen at the time. If it goes up in value, then that is not included when it has to be recalculated at stage two. Um, there are capital gains elements. It's unlikely you'll get a capital gains elements linked with CGT at this stage. It's really about advanced tax, that one is. Um, now, chapter 26, that's a self-study chapter. There are no um, lectures for that. But these elements here are really discussed in there. So it's something that you need to deal with. And they've got lots of illustrations in there um, that would be beneficial. But don't worry about it too much. The planning aspect has started to creep into TX, but it's really not a, a large element at this stage. So a lot in this chapter. You may need to watch it all the way through and do the examples and then go back and do each example again to make sure that you can do it. Pause the lecture, have a go, check what's been said, read through the model answer, make sure you understand it. So watch it through then watch again and pause and do the examples yourself okay then do the practice question and then go to bpp and do the revision questions. Not all of them, some of them. And then a couple of weeks, two, three weeks before your exam. Practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice.